Hey guys, Kenneth Russell here. Sorry, I'm talking a little bit softly. I'm at my pawn shop that I go to all the time. And uh, as you can see, all the guitars behind me back there. And came in today and saw a Gibson Les Paul, except it wasn't a real Gibson Les Paul. I wanted to show you the details on how to spot a fake uh, Les Paul or a fake Gibson uh, compared to a real one. So here we go. All right, so I came in here, looked up there, saw a Gibson Les Paul gold top, and real quickly saw that this is a fake guitar. I'm gonna point out to you all of the inconsistencies with the real one. I'm gonna use some of these other ones as examples. All right, so I've got here, sitting here, three guitars. This is a the fake right here. Here's the fake Gibson. This is a Epiphone Gibson Les Paul Custom. So this is kind of a, the, the real copy of the Gibson, the Epiphone version. Here's the fake. And here's a Gibson uh, Les Paul. The asking price of these he had on here was 1800 bucks. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna show you kind of some of the things that you to look for for a fake. Uh, the first thing that I noticed, if you see there, see how that red just does not look good right there? Kind of like comes up in the binding. You can see paint that has gotten in into that side. That's not gonna be the case. You're not gonna have paint coming up on a binding binding on this side here see how there's that that gap in between there between the binding from the body coming up into the binding on the neck even you can see here on the epiphone it's merged together and this is a lot better job down here on the the bridge these thicker screws in here just like this one they're a little bit thinner than this one but um, you can see here on the real Gibson that these screws, these posts, are actually thinner. They're they're like a, a thinner screw. In all Gibsons, it's going to be a thin screw, and it does not have the screw on the top part here. Whereas like your Epiphones and your other cheaper guitars are going to have the screw on the top happening here. On the Gibsons too, usually, I mean, you could just flop this around, but you know, your screws are on the on this side, whereas your Tunematic bridge on your your fakes and your Epiphones are going to be on the the underside here probably the easiest thing to look at when you're looking for a fake what they'll do is they'll go buy like an epiphone cover right here to put on this fake cover right here but this cover you can see has two screws in it it's only two screws on that truss rod cover and the fake has got the three and the epiphone has the three on there as well gibson's you will never see with three screws whatsoever You'll just never see it. So that's probably the first thing to look at. Now, actually, in recent years, they've they've been better at faking them, and you'll see them with with one screw there. So my guess is this is actually a few years old. Other thing is, if you look at the headstock, it's that's really thick compared to the real Gibson. See how tight that that Gibson logo is compared to this one here. Even the Epiphone over here is a little bit tighter of a logo. It's thinner, a thinner font. Also. There's not enough space up here on that O, where the O kind of cuts out. The dot on the I is a different color than the rest of the, the, of the headstock logo. A couple things I'm actually noticing too. Um, look at that. Look at that trapezoid. Look how horrible that is. I mean, that that is just really, really cheap work done there. Even, even on the uh, Epiphone, it's just, you know, these look a lot sharper in here than this does here. Finally, the last thing you'll see on an Epiphone headstock, it's just got the number, you know, written in on the top. Over here, we've, we've got what looks to be like an authentic serial number on the headstock of the fake Gibson. You'll notice that how deep, I don't know if you can get in there and see that. This is like a really deep cut in there. It's really deep. And on the reel, it's not quite as deep. And I know that's like a tiny thing, but uh, it's just not quite as deep. And I don't know if you can see from the back end here, I'm gonna kind of get that, see how the notch at the top here kind of curves to the side? It's not gonna do that. It's gonna be perfectly book matched, just like this is over here. You can see here that these tuners, an Epiphone tuner, that's obviously aftermarket. And then you've got Gibson Deluxe, but none of the other ones are the same. They're just all, they're, they're you know, it's like you have three different kinds of, of tuners on there. Just as I'm kind of looking through this, just all these details, the headstock, the number on the back wrong, the plate on there is wrong, all these trapezoid, um, they're not even really fully trapezoid, they like, 
they're not even consistent in the shape of them. The way that that binding is there, it's messed up. Anyway, wanted to kind of share with you my experience of coming to the pawn shop with this fake Gibson that I will not be purchasing for $1,800. But anyway, uh, hopefully you like this video. If you did, please hit the like button on uh, YouTube, comment, all that kind of jazz, and I'll see you in another video.